Can everybody? Yeah. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, I'm Congresswoman Linda Sanchez, and I represent the 38th Congressional District in California. And I stand here today as a proud daughter of immigrant parents from Mexico. And like so many Americans and like many families in my Southern California district, my parents came to this country with very little, but a lot of hope that they could build a better life for their children. They struggled, they sacrificed, and they did exactly that. My parents made sure that we received a good education and that we had the tools that we needed to succeed. They sent all seven of my brothers and sisters to college and even sent two of their daughters to the United States Congress. How about that? But there are immigration stories that are far less sunny than mine. Stories of children fleeing unspeakable violence, poverty, and danger to get here. Stories of the mothers who send them, sometimes with just a phone number taped to their wrist, to call when they arrive. Stories of family members who wait for years for loved ones to be processed so that they can finally be reunited with them here in this country. Stories of dreamers who have only known this country to be their home, being told that their pathway to citizenship is still blocked. We are here today because the border bill that Republicans are pushing not only outright denies these stories, but it embraces the same failed xenophobic immigration policies that we've seen from Republicans time and time again. It neglects the people behind immigration policy, from my parents to dreamers to the children who flee unspeakable violence today. There's no doubt that our immigration system is broken and there's no doubt that we need solutions for the problems that we face at our border. But the solution is not HR2, also known as the Child Deportation Act. This bill is a resurgence of failed MAGA border policies that promise harsh enforcement and nothing more. And if we've learned anything from the last three decades, it's that enforcement only solutions will not solve the problem. This bill would eliminate our parole system and make it impossible for those fleeing violence or natural disasters to cross our borders between ports of entry and seek asylum. It would require organizations like the Red Cross and Catholic Charities to verify every individual's immigration status before providing critical life-saving services at our border. It would destroy our American businesses and upend our nation's food system by imposing nationwide e-verify. It would deport folks like dreamers who've been in the US for their lifetime if they do not maintain their status. It would allow unaccompanied children to be detained for a month or more, and it would limit their access to counsel and send them back into the hands of smugglers and those who seek to exploit them. And it would put taxpayer on, taxpayers on the hook for billions of dollars to complete Trump's border wall. This is not what the American people want. But across the board, here are a few things that Americans do support. They support smart, safe, and modern border security. They support dreamers, family unity over family separation and deportation, a pathway to citizenship for the 11 million people who live and work here and contribute to our economy every day. They support engaging countries abroad to address the root causes of immigration and an immigration system that is orderly, but also humane. That is what the US Citizenship Act is all about. The USCA builds on existing funds to provide smarter, safer border management. Rather than dumping money on useless walls, it invests in new technology, infrastructure, and screening capacity to reduce the strain on our border communities. The USCA clears employment-based visa backlogs, which would reduce lines at ports of entry and stimulate job growth as we continue to face labor shortages here at home. It would boost the entire economy by retaining U.S. educated STEM graduates, protecting workers, and improving wages. That means more good paying jobs across the board. The USCA cracks down on bad actors and smugglers who exploit migrants in need while addressing the root causes that force people to make the dangerous journey north in the first place. And the USCA reforms the family-based immigration system by clearing out immigrant visa backlogs and eliminating the statutory barriers that keep families apart. 
Finally, the USCA delivers a long overdue path to citizenship for dreamers and millions of immigrants already in the United States, contributing to our communities and to our economy. The US Citizenship Act doesn't neglect the people behind the immigration policy. Instead, this legislation is built on the fundamental truth that we can have safe, secure borders and policies that reflect our values as a nation of immigrants. This is what the American people want. It is what our border communities need, and it is what every human being seeking a better life in this country deserves. I wanna thank you, and now I wanna introduce a man who really needs no introduction, our thoughtful, brilliant, and esteemed leader, soon to be speaker, Hakeem Jeffries from the great state of New York. Well, good morning, everyone. Oh, good afternoon. Uh, what an honor to be here. Thank you, uh, Representative Sanchez, for your kind words of introduction. More importantly, for your incredible leadership within our caucus on many issues, including on this one, an incredibly uh, important issue for the nation to tackle. And we appreciate uh, you once again putting forward the U.S. Citizenship Act, an enlightened approach to addressing the immigration challenges that we have here in the United States of America. I'm also thankful to be joined by these extraordinary uh, leaders who will be introduced, Pete, Nanette, Judy, uh, and Yvette Clark, uh, and their work uh, along with Representative Sanchez in advancing the issue of comprehensive immigration reform. We do have a broken immigration system here uh, in the United States of America, and it does require a thoughtful and comprehensive solution, an approach that is anchored in our values as a country based on two pillars. One, a nation anchored, of course, in the rule of law, but a nation of immigrants, people who come from all across the world to form the gorgeous mosaic that is America and a diversity in America that is and should continue to be the envy of the world. The fact that we are a gorgeous mosaic of people from all across the globe is a strength. That diversity is a competitive strength. It is an economic strength. It's a cultural strength and it contributes to the American exceptionalism that will allow our country to continue to win the future throughout the 21st century. But that requires a thoughtful approach toward fixing our broken immigration system. That thoughtful approach is the US Citizenship Act. It's a thoughtful approach that unifies immigrant families, doesn't divide them, a thoughtful approach that ensures there are smart investments to bring about order at the border. A thoughtful approach that stands up for the dreamers who are already such an important and integral and intimate part of American society. It's a thoughtful approach that provides a robust pathway towards citizenship, which the American people support. And so you have the U.S. Citizenship Act on the one hand, and I'm thankful for the leadership of this incredible coalition, Representative Sanchez and all of the members who have been involved in this effort. And then you have an extreme approach. That's the Child Deportation Act, the so-called H.R. 2, one of the extreme MAGA Republicans' top priorities. How do they propose? to address our broken, fragile immigration system? Well, they wanna waste billions and billions of taxpayer dollars on a medieval border wall, a 14th century solution that will not work to a 21st century challenge. They continue to bend the knee to the former twice impeached president of the United States of America in terms of their policy proposals. The Republicans want a medieval border wall, waste taxpayer dollars. 
and not invest in creating opportunities for new generations of immigrant Americans to come here and contribute to this gorgeous mosaic that has made America the greatest nation in the world. They will effectively do nothing to stop the flow of fentanyl into this country, 90% of which comes through the ports of entry. And the majority of people who are arrested for fentanyl and narcotics trafficking through our southern border actually happen to be United States citizens. And so we have a thoughtful approach, the U.S. Citizenship Act, and then we have the extreme MAGA Republican approach that is not anchored in facts or data or thoughtful, compassionate solutions consistent with who we are as Americans. The Republican approach is anchored in xenophobia and fanning the flames of hatred and distrust and of irresponsible policies that will do nothing to solve the problem. So thank you, Representative Sanchez, for your leadership on this issue. I thank this tremendous coalition of members of the House Democratic Caucus, and it's now my honor uh, to yield to another champion for sensible, comprehensive uh, immigration reform who has led from the moment that he arrived in the Congress a few terms ago, our chair, Representative Chairman Pete Aguilar. Thank you, Mr. Leader. Thank you so much for that. And I want to thank uh, Congresswoman Sanchez for bringing us all together uh, for an important cause. We're here to send the very clear message that House Democrats are ready and have been ready to invest in a secure border and to deliver real immigration reform. What Republicans are bringing onto the floor this week is not substantive. It's extreme and recycles the same failed policies from the prior administration that did nothing to help our situation at the southern border. And as the leader often mentions, they are team extreme. We are team normal, team get stuff done, team, team help our country, uh, and team immigration reform. Just like the American people, Democrats want a safe and orderly border and a fair immigration system that treats immigrant families and children with the dignity and respect that they deserve. That's why we're so proud to reintroduce the U.S. Citizenship Act to build off of our investments in safety and personnel at the border, open more lawful pathways for citizenship, and address the root causes of migration. Our legislation would strengthen the labor market and add stability to our economy. This is the best path forward to deliver true comprehensive immigration reform. I only hope our colleagues on the other side of the aisle come to their senses and join us at the negotiating table. It's now my honor to introduce a leader in the Congress and a colleague of mine from California, Representative Judy Chu. Hello, I'm Congress member Judy Chu and I'm thrilled to be here for the introduction of this very important bill to modernize our immigration system. And I wanna thank my colleague, Linda Sanchez, for her leadership in assembling the U.S. Citizenship Act, which is the framework we need to modernize and reform our broken immigration system. And it's especially important now as we face a cruel extremist Republican immigration proposal on the House floor this week, Republicans are seeking to decimate our asylum system and humanitarian protections, put more children and families in detention, cause chaos at our borders, and weaken our economy. But our U.S. Citizenship Act stands in stark contrast. It recognizes that a robust, humane, and efficient immigration system makes America stronger. It includes so many democratic priorities and policies that the House passed in the last Congress, including a path to citizenship for all dreamers, TPS holders, and farm workers. And unlike the Republican proposal on the House floor this week, this bill is a serious proposal that would alleviate the humanitarian crisis at the southern border by addressing the root causes of migration and providing resources to humanely and efficiently process children and families who seek asylum in the U.S. 
And I am especially proud that this package puts families first by including provisions from my bill, the Reuniting Families Act. There are currently over 4 million people in the family immigration backlog waiting to reunite with loved ones. This bill would reduce the employment and family-based visa backlog so families can be together without waiting years and even decades for their cases to wind their way through an antiquated system. And it would also provide protections from another bill I've championed, the No Ban Act, which would prevent any future president from ever repeating the Trump Muslim ban by banning groups of people based on religion. Finally, we know that immigrants make up a significant portion of essential frontline workers in industries like healthcare, construction, and agriculture. But despite how much this country depends on immigrant workers, some unscrupulous employers seek to exploit them, making them work extreme hours in difficult and dangerous conditions. And that's why I am also proud that this act would end this exploitation by including my power act the, my bill to protect immigrant workers who report unfair labor practices from deportation by putting families and workers first we can build a stronger economy and by addressing the root causes of migration in a humane and efficient manner we can secure our southern border and so i look forward to working to move this legislation forward and I would like to now turn it over to, oh, Congress member Veronica Escobar. When I started this, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I want to um, state my very strong support for this comprehensive, thoughtful, solutions-based piece of legislation. And uh, I want to thank uh, Representative Linda Sanchez for her leadership. I want to thank Chairwoman Barragan for her leadership and everyone here and with us uh, in the House Democratic Caucus who understands that the best way to ensure that our country addresses what's happening in border communities like my own is offering legal pathways. For the last three to four decades, the federal government has approached immigration as a border only situation. We've seen that it doesn't work. I can tell you as the representative who serves and represents the community on the border that has seen the largest number of apprehensions and encounters in 2022 and uh, already in 2023, historic numbers as well. We are not going to address what's happening at our border in the way that Republicans are attempting to approach this, which is focus only on enforcement and shut down every possible legal pathway. The reason that our immigration system is so broken today is because of our Republican colleagues' refusal to open up those legal pathways. So we know and we have seen that when all we do is offer asylum as a legal pathway, a very overloaded system completely breaks. So the best possible alternative is to work with us, is for our Republican uh, colleagues to work with us if they are serious about addressing what's happening on the border. If they are unserious, if all they want is a messaging bill, that's what we're going to get this week if they're able to cobble together uh, the votes to pass it. But these um, unserious, deeply partisan flawed and in fact draconian attempts only move us further away from doing what we should have been doing a long time ago as a Congress, and that is increasing legal pathways. It will help address our labor shortage. It will help increase our GDP, and it will keep our country competitive. The, the, it would be advantageous to us in every single way possible 
to to offer these legal pathways and to make sure that we know who's coming into the country, to make sure that we are addressing the needs of the, the workforce and that we are treating people with the dignity and the humanity that every human being deserves. So um, I'm eager to work on this legislation. I hope our Republican colleagues join us in this effort to finally modernize outdated laws um, without working with us and without opening up these legal pathways. I am very deeply concerned that we will see just more of the same uh, going forward into the future. Um, I would now like to turn it over to our CHC chairwoman, Nanette Barragan. Uh, thank you, everybody, uh, my colleagues, for being here today, for all of your work. Thank you, Linda, for leading um, and being the leader on this issue. As chair of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus, I'm proud to stand with Congresswoman Sanchez and Democratic leadership in support of the U.S. Citizenship Act. It's a bill that offers long-term solutions to fix our immigration system. It's long overdue. This is a bill that's a starting point to build momentum on a system that's humane and efficient, that keeps the border secure and keeps our economy strong. It provides, as was mentioned, a pathway to citizenship for 11 million people who work here um, in an orderly and humane immigration system, something that is sorely needed, especially given that for the last uh, several years, we have seen effectively um, the asylum immigration system um, being shut down uh, from the prior administration and from COVID. And so this is the immigration reform that our country needs, especially at a time when our asylum system is at risk from attacks uh, from the right. And again, it restores humanity to our immigration system. It prioritizes keeping families together and provides real solutions for border security. The Congressional Hispanic Caucus stands ready to do whatever it takes to pass comprehensive immigration reform, securing our border, but also providing that pathway to citizenship that so many who have contributed to our society deserve and that our country wants and needs. And with that, um, I'm proud to stand here also with our tri-caucus members um, because this is a tri-caucus effort, a democratic caucus effort, and this is about values. Um, so I'd like to now turn it over to my colleague, a representative Yvette Clark from the state of New York. Thank you very much, Representative Barragan, and greetings to everyone. And it's great to be here with the press. Um, let me uh, say thank you to my dear friend and colleague, Congresswoman Linda Sanchez. Congresswoman, your leadership in reforming our immigration system and your unwavering tenacity to make this nation a better place by passing comprehensive immigration reform has been tremendous. I'm Congresswoman Yvette D. Clark of the 9th District of New York. I'm a first vice chair of the Congressional Black Caucus and chairperson of their immigration task force. And as a daughter of Jamaican immigrants, it is not lost on me the multitude of hardships and difficulties families experience when they come to this nation in hopes of finding the American dream. Unfortunately, our immigration system, which has not been updated in over 30 years, is broken. Broken to a point where the last administration rejected reason for madness by locking kids in cages and denying the human rights to seek asylum. Broken to a point where a land of immigrants should be ashamed at the tragic reality created for immigrants coming to our borders and our shores. As we speak, extremist MAGA Republicans are fighting tooth and nail to, to break it even further with HR2, their Child Deportation Act. This cruel legislation would force draconian restrictions and punishments on immigrants and asylum seekers and set America's immigration priorities back for years. Any bill that would allow vulnerable migrant children to be inhumanely detained by Border Patrol for up to a month is an unacceptable solution. And again, as the chair of the Immigration Task Force of the Congressional Black Caucus, I have seen the glaring inequities 
blatant racism, vicious xenophobia, and civil rights violations immigrants face, particularly immigrant communities of African descent. Yes, it's true. Immigrants of color experience immigration inequities more than any other community and immigrants of European origin. But let me be clear, immigrants, regardless of status, contribute billions every year in taxes and to the American economy. Still, many can't access the safety provisions vital to ensure that every community thrives. That's why I am so proud to support the U.S. Citizenship Act, a bill for our vision, a bill of our vision for fixing our immigration system once and for all. But only Congress can provide immigrants with a path to citizenship. So let's create a roadmap for citizenship for the people who already live and work in America, including dreamers. Let's modernize the employment and family visa systems so we can have a fair process for those who have come to America fleeing persecution and violence in the prime of their lives. Let's level the playing field in the labor market and help boost our economy. We can do all these things and more. And that work begins with the U.S. Citizenship Act. So I want to thank you once again, my colleagues. Uh, we're standing strong together in the Democratic Caucus and thank Representative Sanchez for her continued leadership on this matter. We won't stop until we achieve comprehensive immigration reform. Thank you. Um, and I yield back to the gentlelady from California. Thank you so much. Do I not have incredibly talented and thoughtful colleagues? Um, this is a caucus-wide effort, and um, at this point, we will open it up for questions. There are questions. Yes. Mr. the President said that it's going to be chaotic for a while with the ending of Title 42. Is it justifiable for the American people to question or to be concerned about those comments, but also to question if the president's immigration policy is working? Well, the president's immigration policy is embedded in the U.S. Citizenship Act. Legislatively, we need to act. Our immigration system has been broken for a long time. Title 42 only created pent-up demand, which is why we are going to see the increased numbers. So it, we can keep kicking the can down the road, but effectively, the only way that we are going to get to an orderly and safe process is to overhaul our immigration system. Closing down legal pathways only creates that bigger demand at the border. Is there anybody else that would like to address that question? Okay. Yes. Um, yes, yeah, so this is on the U.S. Uh, Citizenship Act. And if I could just use a quick anecdote of a, of a loved one of mine who was a European immigrant, uh, did university here, paid a lot in tuition, has worked for three years, generated a lot of tax revenue, but she unfortunately didn't win the lottery, so now we're sending her back. So I'm wondering if the bill addresses that type of immigrant and if there's room for some sort of policy that, you know, for, for immigrants who generate a lot of revenue for our government, is there any sort of reward built in there for those for those people? Yeah, so one of the things that the um, U.S. Uh, Citizenship Act would do is um, get rid of the cap on employment-based visas. And it would also make it easier for those who graduate with STEM degrees because we spend considerable amount of time and, and money educating people in our universities, uh, only then to not allow them to stay. And many of them go to other countries like Canada, who is welcoming, welcoming them with open arms. If we are going to remain competitive and innovative, we need to make it easier for highly educated uh, um, job generating immigrants to stay in this country. We educate them and then we effectively kick them out. Not a great way to, to run our immigration system. Yes. What do you see as the prospects for a bipartisan uh, immigration and or border bill in Congress? And what do you see as the potential points of compromise, uh, you know, between the bill that Republicans are setting? Yeah, so it's interesting because in the last Congress, we managed to pass on a bipartisan basis several pieces of what is embedded in the USCA. Um, we had the Farm Workforce Modernization Act, which was passed on a bipartisan basis, and the Dreamers Act, which was passed on a bipartisan basis. So there has been, in the past, appetite 
to approach this uh, in a way that is sensible and that both sides of the aisle can agree upon. However, we have seen those positions harden. Um, and by introducing the USCA, I hope to foster a discussion about what is rational. Because if you talk to any business owner in the United States today, one of the biggest issues that they are encountering is lack of workforce. We have a very low unemployment rate. People are having a hard time finding workers. And we have people that want to come to this country and work. We just don't have legislation that allows them those, those avenues to pursue that. So my hope is that Republicans will sit down and we can talk about USCA, talk about how enforcement only is not going to secure our border. It's not going to get rid of um, the people that present at the southern border. Um, and my hope is that we can kick off a discussion in what is actually reasonable and good for this country. Because one of the things that gets lost in the discussion is that immigration is good for this country. It benefits our economy. Um, if we could just legalize dreamers, for example, which is a subset of the 11 million that are living and working here, it would add $1 trillion to our economy over the span of 10 years. Imagine what that would do. So my hope is that we can kick off a discussion and a real negotiation, not just deal with extreme messaging bills that the Republicans um, seem intent on doing. Yeah, I think this will be our last question. Do I have, no, I'm fairly confident that the enforcement only approach that they're taking, Democratic members understand that that is not a solution. It's in fact only going to exacerbate the problem. All right, we're good. Thanks guys. And thank you, colleagues.